Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a discovery of yet another somewhat strange exoplanet. An exoplanet that once again seems to be evaporating as a result of its star, but in this case is producing some of the most extreme emissions and some of the most extreme evaporation we have ever seen anywhere. In other words, this planet seems to be losing so much mass all at once that the scientists now believe it's going to be gone in approximately 2 million years. With this now being one of the most exciting discoveries when it comes to disintegrating planets, and the planet that's soon going to be examined by the James Webb in order to actually see what it's made out of. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the obvious. Approximately 5 years ago, such a discovery would be absolutely mind-blowing. But in just the last few years, researchers actually discovered quite a lot of similar examples of basically planets orbiting the star super close to the point where they start evaporating in their atmospheres or, like in this case, actually their surface. And though the first such planets discovered were all gas giants, would one of the recent planets we discussed a few months ago basically be in a gas giant that produces an enormous helium tail? In some of the more rare cases, scientists have also discovered terrestrial planets that already lost their atmosphere and are now just boiling and evaporating as a result of the distance to the star. For example, this discovery was a gas giant known as WASP-69b. But the evaporation in this case was not very fast. It was only shrinking by approximately one mass of Earth every billion years. And so this planet is probably going to survive for quite a long time. Likewise, there's another example known as HAT-P32b, which is basically a hot Jupiter. Another case of a gas giant extremely close to the parent star that's very slowly evaporating its atmosphere, and specifically its helium, forming these really massive tails. But here, once again, this is a really slow process. It might take up to 40 billion years. And so when it comes to gas giants, these planets, despite the evaporation, still have quite a long time to go. And in many cases, they might even outlive the actual star. But out of approximately 10,000 different stars examined by the Kepler telescope, so far, only three seem to contain terrestrial planets that seem to show signs of very slow evaporation. Basically here, instead of losing the atmosphere, they are creating a kind of a dust tail that's causing the planet to lose its crust and of course its mantle and will eventually very likely destroy it completely. And extremely recently, we've discussed one such example where the scientists finally confirmed an actual destroyed planet that seemed to have turned into a ring and caused the star to expand as you see right here. And it was officially confirmed in a study only a few weeks back. You can find that video in the description. But compared to that destroyed planet, the previously discovered terrestrial planets that are being shredded apart all actually have quite a long time to go. One of the first known examples, Kepler-1520b, might actually survive for at least another 400 million years. With the other planet, Koi-2700b, very likely surviving much longer, several billion years. And the third example, K222b, may be disappearing in about 21 million years in the future. But now scientists seem to have discovered one of the most exciting such planets because not only is it one of the closest, it also seems to produce the most evaporation and is also producing the biggest tail visible from planet Earth. But before we talk about the planet, let me briefly mention how scientists even know this is happening and how these observations are done. Just like with a lot of other exoplanetary detections, this is the result of the transit observations. Basically looking at the planet as it passes in front of a star. And normally, in any star system containing different planets, we'll actually see an extremely similar dip that usually depends on the size of the planet and sometimes depends on the angle of passage as well. But when it comes to these evaporating planets, something else usually happens when this dip occurs. They basically very often look like fangs. Instead of being more or less equal on both sides, these dips usually have a somewhat long tail that can actually take several hours to complete, which in this case indicates that there's something else in the orbit of the planet and that something is also blocking the star. And in this case, these residual observations were not always the same either. They actually fluctuated with every single orbit, which could only be explained if there was basically something coming from the planet and it was always different with every single passage. An evaporating planet could definitely explain this. But because the actual orbit of the planet is approximately 30 hours long, yet this trail usually lasted for 15 hours, it implied that this trailing tail was at least half the orbit long. 9 million kilometers, or about 6 million miles. And since it was producing a relatively large shadow in front of the star, 
This also implied a relatively high evaporation rate and most likely a somewhat low in mass planet. Much less massive than planet Earth because planets like Earth, even at these temperatures, should still be able to hold on to their material without evaporating too much. And so by using 3D simulations, researchers established that this is very likely a Mercury-like planet, or basically an object that's about 4 to 5 times more massive than our Moon, that seems to orbit the star every 30 hours, and seems to lose Mount Everest amount of material with every single orbit. This is the highest evaporation rate we've seen so far from any planet. And so assuming that the mass here is correct, it's actually going to disappear anywhere from 1 to maybe 2 million years in the future with the planet most likely eventually forming some kind of a ring around the star, but very likely avoiding the collision with the star, just because all of this will happen pretty quickly. And so here the resulting event is going to be very different from what the scientists observed during the collision of a planet a few years back. And so in the end, this is just going to create a kind of a ring star until all of this material is blown away. But here the biggest question right now is of course, what's exactly in this material? Because we know that this is definitely not ices and not even gases, as these gases and ices would usually evaporate super quickly. So wherever this is, it seems to stay in the orbit, even though it's so close to the star. Which is actually where the James Webb is going to help us in the next few months. Scientists have not observed the star and the planet with the James Webb yet, but once it's done, they're hoping to discover what this planet is made out of. And something very similar was already done for this other planet known as K222b the other disintegrating terrestrial planet. Here this is also a really small planet, possibly the mass of Mars or Mercury, and the observations from the James Webb in April of 2024 was able to reveal magnesium silicate minerals that's somewhat similar but a little bit different from what we find in the mantle of Earth. But intriguingly here, iron-rich minerals or iron-rich deposits were not discovered. But there was an unusual discovery of some kind of a gas, maybe CO2 or maybe nitrogen oxide. You can learn more about this in one of the studies in the description, but basically here this was an initial attempt at trying to discover the composition of disintegrating exoplanets. But unfortunately the signal was just not strong enough. In comparison, the signal from this planet is very strong. And so here it's quite likely researchers will know exactly what it's made out of and what seems to be inside this tail. Right now it's assumed to be something similar, possibly some kind of a magnesium-based magma with quite a lot of silicon inside, that's boiling into outer space and is being removed by the radiation from the star. And because this is only 140 light years away from us, the observations here are going to be super accurate. And so right now the biggest question is of course, so what minerals are we going to find here? Are they going to be similar to what we find on Earth? Or are they going to be entirely different and completely alien? Because for all we know, unlike Earth, which is technically an oxygen planet, this could be a carbon planet containing entirely different stuff. And so in terms of actual discoveries, that's unfortunately all we know for now. There are going to be more discoveries in the future, but there are obviously way more questions than answers. For example, one question that's somewhat difficult to answer right now is of course, what kind of a planet was this in the past? Since it's evaporating so quickly, and since it's already lost such a huge mass, and also since it basically has like 1 million years to go, we can only assume that it's been doing this for a very long time. And this is also a pretty old star. This star is actually older than 5 billion years old, and so if this planet existed in this region since the beginning, it must have been super massive before. As a matter of fact, it might have been one of these hot Jupiters. And so could this be a typical hot Jupiter that evaporated very slowly over billions of years? Or is this something entirely different that accidentally migrated closer to the star in the more recent times? And if so, what exactly happened and how did it actually end up here? At the moment, the history of this planet doesn't really make a lot of sense. But right now, this is definitely going to become the main target for trying to figure out what's known as exoplanetary mineralogy. Basically trying to find out how different exoplanets are in terms of their contents and if Earth and the solar system planets are indeed unique. I mean, in terms of the number of minerals, we already know that Earth is super unique. Even compared to Mars that contains a few hundred minerals, Earth seems to have over 5,000, maybe even more. And since many of these minerals are directly connected to the biosphere on the planet, or basically seem to be the result of the activity from life, studying mineralogy of exoplanets is just as important as looking for extraterrestrial life. But because this is such a deep topic, we'll come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. And so until then, or until we have more discoveries from this exoplanet, that's all I wanted to mention. 
Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about science, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining your channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.